What exactly is beta software? Let's talk about it. Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. With Apple's WWDC right around the corner, that usually means a new version of iOS is going to be announced. And that means a beta release of that OS will be made available. So I thought I'd talk about what beta software is and why you may or may not want to use it. But before we get started, be sure to like this video if you found it useful, click on subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss when I post new how-tos and reviews. Every year around this time, Apple has their Worldwide Developers Conference, or WWDC. Apple uses this event to announce new versions of their operating systems for iOS, iPadOS, and macOS. And right after the keynote, beta versions of these OSs are made available. Now, they're made available so developers can start to use the OS builds to work on their own software. That can include updating their software compatibility, making changes, or adding features to work with newly announced OS features, and so on. So, what does this have to do with beta software? Well, beta software is a pre-release build of software that may contain bugs, have performance issues, or be missing features that aren't quite ready yet. Software usually has an alpha release that will have a number of issues and isn't ready for the public. Then the software goes into a beta release. In this release, it's usually made available to the public to get feedback and allow users to test out new features. If it's software that costs money, sometimes beta releases are given for free in exchange for providing feedback. Beta software can go through several releases of bug and stability fixes before it goes to GA, or general availability. Now, Apple releases two versions of their beta software, the developer beta and the public beta. The developer beta is released the day iOS, iPadOS, and macOS are announced. The public beta typically is released two weeks to a month later. For a little history on iOS, Long ago, you had to have a developer account with Apple in order to download the developer beta release when it was announced. And you had to register each one of your devices. So if you knew someone with a dev account, you could ask them to register your device so you could get the downloads. Then we moved to where you just had to have a developer account, but you didn't have to register each device. You still had to pay for the developer account though. Well, last year, Apple decided to make the developer beta available for free. So now you can download either the dev or public beta without having to pay for a developer account. As someone who has installed iOS beta software for quite some time now, I would highly recommend waiting until the public beta is released. These days, Apple puts out a pretty stable dev beta because they know so many people install it. And iOS is much more mature in development. In years past, I've installed iOS betas and it has broken things on my phone. Then I'm stuck waiting for the next beta release, hoping my issue's fixed. And for me, that was okay because I knew what I was getting into when I installed the beta. Remember that beta software is still under development and if you're going to use it, be prepared to accept that your iPhone or your iPad might not work correctly. You might find that there's a bug or an app that stops working and it might be an app you use daily. Of course, I'd love to hear your stories and experiences. And not just with iOS beta software, but with other software as well. If you've ever installed an iOS beta, drop a comment below. Thanks again for watching everyone, and we'll talk soon.